What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Copart here in Oklahoma City for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. So I'm literally picking up where I left off in the previous video where we saw this beautiful CLS 550 with way too many miles, a bad motor mount and different sized tires that I just decided I had to have. So we're gonna simply turn around. We're gonna continue walking through this big long row of cars and see if we can find anything interesting. If you guys I see anything that I miss while walking through here, do me a favor and time stamp it in the video down in the comments below. Tell me what it was, what color it was, and I'll do my best to come back and check it out next time I'm here. But that is assuming that the vehicle's still here. You gotta remember this auction yard, they move like a thousand cars a week or something like that. It's, it's a pretty crazy number, so chances are it won't be here next time. But if it is, I'll be happy to check it out for you. Uh, now, you know, I can't pass up a 7 Series, even though this is probably, well, it's hard to say which one is one of the worst, because let's be honest, BMW doesn't make very good quality cars. Now, with that said, they make great cars. They drive great and they ride great. It's a luxurious experience for sure, but I've owned my fair share of them and... Uh, Oh, that's mud. That's nice. Um, <laughs> these things just... Part of it is that people just don't take care of them. You know what I mean? It's a 740i, so it's not going to have the big V8. It's going to be, uh, what, a twin turbo or a twin scroll turbo um, six-cylinder. Let me see if I can squeeze through here. See the other side? It's not bad. Uh, tires look pretty good. The wheels look good. The body looks pretty good with the exception of the front. Uh, the thing is with these cars, though... They just, legitimately, they're not reliable, guys. These things are an absolute nightmare to work on. Now, nothing like the Bentley, for sure. These are a little more user-friendly, I think, than the Bentley. We've got the front all chewed up here. This front bumper used to be a different color. It was silver. And instead of doing prep work and sanding and painting, well, you can still see the, <laughs> the silver-gray color underneath. It's not scuffed at all. I mean, it's... Uh, it still has clear coat on it. So yeah, someone just tossed a bumper on this thing and sent it on down the road. I'm gonna try to get over here and maybe we can get in, take a look. It probably doesn't have any power. It's got the M Sport package. You know that because they put M everywhere. M on the floor, M on the steering wheel, M on the door sills, just it's, it's everywhere. It looks like somebody tried breaking into this a few times. It is all scuffed up. Uh, really bad. Well, let's climb in. I'm guessing this thing's got like 185,000 miles. And it runs. Oh, no power steering though. Ugh, wow, none at all. And there's a, there's a nice little light on the dash with the steering wheel on it. Just to let you know that the steering wheel doesn't work. Oh, and here's another one telling you that the steering wheel doesn't work. So that's great. Um, I'm assuming this is what, electronic power steering? It's a 2015. I'm gonna assume it's a it's electronic power steering on this one, guys. We'll pop the hood because who knows? Maybe it's not. Looks like you have uh, adaptive cruise control right here, maybe. Is that what that does? I don't know. This is uh, honestly kind of nice. Aside from, from the no power steering, this isn't too bad. Let's turn on the air conditioning. Let's crank it up a little bit, see if it works. I feel something. Well, only coming out of one side. No, oh, it's got dual zone fan speeds too? Oh, wow. All right, that's... I still don't feel anything coming out of this side though. Nothing. Yeah, so we've got air conditioning coming out of the driver's side, but there, if I turn this down, and I turn this up, oh, there it goes. It's still only coming out of the driver's side. I don't get it, man. Am I doing something wrong here? This is too complicated for air conditioning. Anyway, the AC does work, but it's only coming out of these vents right here. Let's see what else this thing's got. Does it have a... I think this is backwards. Does this... Well... 
I'm thinking this was cup holders. But it doesn't want to. It's jammed up on this side. And then right here we have an ashtray, I guess. That wouldn't work very well. Um, trying to get your cigarette in there. That's not, that's not going to work. Air-conditioned seats. I'm hoping that the, uh, the power steering comes back to life. It ain't coming back to life, guys. We've got little cubbies right here. Oh, there's some Mary Juana in there, along with a lot of crumbs. A little cubby hole here. Glove box here with the books. Very nice. We'll pop the trunk. Make sure the hood is popped. Let's try out the power windows. And the air-conditioned seat feels really nice. Looks like all the windows work. Wow. Okay. I could be interested in this one. Where is the parking brake? Looks like it's... No, no. Right here. Make sure it turns off. It does. We're going to put it into gear. Ooh, it vibrates like crazy. Sounds like a motor mount issue. Forwards and... Backwards. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Okay, well, you know, it's not perfect, but honestly, I don't think this is that bad, guys. How hard could it be to fix the power steering? <laughs> don't answer that. Let's take a look back here. Oh, this doesn't work? I guess not. Wow, look at the trunk space back here. Good lord. There's a lot of room. There we go. See, it works. Things are already coming back to life on this for us, guys. Let's take a peek under the hood. I already know this is going to be electronic power steering. So, there's your little twin scroll six cylinder. Actually, sounds pretty good. And yeah, I'm, I'm certain this is a. Uh, this is electronic power steering. Probably needs a rack. Could be a power issue. Maybe it blew a fuse. I don't really see anything that concerns me. Let's see if the front wheels are both pointing the same direction. That wheel is straight. This wheel is straight. What's interesting is this is from an insurance company. So that kind of implies that something happened. I don't know, could they have run through water? Maybe they went through some deep water and it killed the, the rack and pinion? That's my guess, is there, there's something definitely going on with the rack and pinion. And since it's from an insurance company, it almost has to have something to do with that. Uh, we're missing a grill over here and the bumper is definitely cracked. It took an impact there. This grill is popped out. Hell, maybe they ran over something, you know? Maybe they ran up over something and it, it damaged the rack. Either way, it's safe to assume it's going to need a rack. So I'll, uh, I'll jump on to carparts.com and eBay and I'll look around, try to get an idea of what a rack would cost for this. And I'd still like to know why we have nothing coming out of the passenger side vents. But either way, the car started on its own. It didn't need any help. You never know. You could just cl clear the codes, you know. Uh, miles, I don't think I told you the miles, uh, almost 200,000, 191,000 miles on the odometer on this car. Uh, oh, can we turn, let's turn that off. I pushed the wrong button. What I was wanting to do was clear the uh, codes up here, like clear out all the stuff going on on the dash. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know how to do that. This is all cruise control, oh, right here. There we go. Now you can see everything on the dash. 23 miles a gallon average, not bad for a big car like this, right? And can we get to the miles again? No? There it is, 191,248 miles. That is a lot of miles on a Beamer. A lot of miles on a Beamer. Huh.
I like this one a lot, and I'm not the biggest BMW fanatic, guys. I, not not really a, a big BMW fan myself. I'll take a Mercedes all day, every day. Like, if I have to choose between an S-Class and a 7 Series, it's going to be an S-Class all day, every day. But there's something about this one I just kind of like. Okay, let's continue on our way. I've got it on my watch list, and I was right. It is listed as undercarriage damage, so most likely it ran up over something. And there may be a lot more damage than just a rack and pinion. There could be subframe damage. There could be other suspension damage that we haven't seen. Um, so that one I'm going to be very cautious on, especially considering it's a 200,000 mile BMW, guys. That's that's not one I want to pay a premium for. You know what I mean? So we'll uh, we'll be cautious while bidding on that one we're just gonna walk through here i see this little thing here a little uh slk probably like what is it a 280 or something like that this little thing has been here forever is it hitting the back i don't remember no slk 230 such a it's just a cute little car man it, it's been here for quite a while i don't know what's going on with it, it looks like this trunk isn't closed either I'm sure it's dead. I mean, this thing, it, this has been sitting here for a cool minute. It should have the date up here. This was picked up on September 7th of 23, and it's still here. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know how these places have enough money to have all these cars that are worth, you know, decent money just sit. I don't understand that. Because I couldn't do it, man. Like, I'm on top of every single car that sells. I'm making phone calls every couple days if a car isn't paid for. You know what I mean? Like, I stay on top of people over my vehicles. Meanwhile, you got cars like this sit here for six months. And it's like the owners, whoever they are, insurance company, whatever the case may be, it's like they just forget about them. You know? It's just... I, I don't I don't get it. I really don't get it. Must be nice though. Must be nice to have that kind of money cuz uh when it's time to sell a car, I need to sell my car and then I need to get paid for it as quickly as possible. That hood doesn't open. That's a problem. The hood release is broken then. Uh so we're not going to be able to look at this one. I wanted to check it out. And I also see this this massive gap here like something something's going on with the back end of this. I notice there's a little bit of paint chipping down here at the bottom. So maybe it did get hit a little more down there. Yeah, I think maybe it took a little little tap to the backside there. Probably runs though, but it ain't gonna do anything if you can't get that hood open. A Jeep Liberty, no thank you. Been there, done that, man. That thing spun me out trying to get onto the highway and I said, never again, never. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Another Mercedes. We got here a little C-Class. Oh, that's pretty. Damn, that's pretty. Black with the dark limo tinted windows. This is nice. What's going on with these wheels? These are different. AMG wheels? Really? Now, I already know you guys are yelling at me. Because it's like, that's not a C-Class. You can tell by these damn doors. It's way too big. It's an E-Class. My mistake. I was looking at it from the front. I didn't really see anything else. It's an E350. 4 Looks like it... Ooh. Ouch. Yeah. See, at first I thought it took a hit to the back. And I was like, no big deal. I don't really see any damage. And I don't. I don't see any damage back here. It looks like you could throw the bumper on it. Which may be in the back seat. You'd be fine. Definitely... <laughs> gonna have some suspension damage to work out these wheels though man i'm 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 I, part of me hates them i think god those are ugly and part of me thinks man that was brave that was bold of mercedes to uh to put those on there and it almost makes me love them obviously suspension damage if we look down here probably got a broken control arm would be my guess i'll let you guys look around and you can tell me if you see anything broken. But that's that's my guess. It's probably a, a broken control arm. Uh, not that big of a deal. Um, the door, again, not really a big deal. It's just a door. There is some damage to the quarter right here. I'll be honest with you. Again, if it's me, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't. You know, this one is far worse to the dog lay over here. That damage is far worse. But 
that's the worst of it and it's really not that bad you know uh, throw a little touch up paint on it put a door on it call it a day you don't need to worry about replacing windows just get a door that's fully loaded ready to go let's take a look at the interior unfortunately this thing's been left open to the elements so that's never good i wonder where all the parts went normally the uh the body shop send the parts with the car i'm really surprised that this one doesn't have any of the parts unless they're in the trunk it's got power it's got the key that's a good sign one key let's see if it'll fire up it does active brake assist assist function limited active lane keep assist and operative i mean it is missing an entire tail light as well and it's got a check engine light wow check engine light really parking brake error understandable the wheels practically ripped off of the car traction control yeah she's she's got a few problems anti-lock brakes what do we got in here oh we got little vape things oh and somebody drew a picture Did you try again? or something i don't know that's a little art thing there uh it's got nfc oh we got receipts we won't show any of that stuff oh boy we got more stuff boy this thing is just loaded isn't it hopefully this has air conditioned seats i'm going to turn the air conditioning on and we'll crank it down i have no doubt that it works but we'll see what the mileage is on this thing too these buttons are so cool man these touch sensitive uh you can kind of scroll up and down type things home back okay clear all these codes <laughs> yes there's a lot of them thank you thank you thank you there we go Forty-four thousand miles on a 2021 e350 ac works great i think we can uh we can safely turn that down guys definitely works i'd love to see the uh the climate control over here do you just scroll yeah 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 you literally just scroll wow Look at that. I'm impressed by some of the silliest things. Like, this is really nice. Let's scroll over to comfort. And, oh, wow. Seat kinetics. All right. Ambient lighting. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna I could play with this all day. I ain't gonna sit here and play with it all day. Um, this is gonna go for some money, obviously. This is a... Uh, this is gonna go for more money than I probably want to play with. But we'll finish checking it out anyway. If this was a little older, you know, maybe it'd be worth looking at. But this this is too new for us, guys. It's gonna be too much money. Um, and then the parts also, considering how new it is, parts are gonna be relatively expensive for this. Looks like you've got your belt moldings. You've got the quarter window. They did include the brake light, which does not appear to be broken. All the pieces are there, so that's nice. Uh, you got some waffles if you get hungry, and some toast. So, yeah. You know, actually, I am, I am kind of hungry, so... I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't actually going to put that in my, in my mouth. Okay, yeah. That was, that was meant to just be a joke, and then I, I accidentally got some of that toast there. I think it'll be fine, though. All right, that's it for the the E class. Now let's see what else we got out here. We got a little Audi, Volkswagens. What do we got? This is an Audi. We got a Cadillac sitting over there. This one's smashed in the front. CTS, yeah, no front bumper, and it's not a V, so it's definitely not something I'd be interested in. I still think the CTS is a nice looking Cadillac, though, guys. I think they're good looking cars. We've about run through everything on this row that's crazy that's a lot of cars now here's a nice little audi little a4 let's see what year this is oh never mind it's a 2011 it's an a4 prestige but uh you know unfortunately yeah she took a she took a pretty gnarly hit to the back chevy malibu i'm not really feeling any of that guys chevy impala nah i don't think any of us are feeling any of that right now i'm telling you I need a break. I need to get out to somewhere, whether I don't care, California, Florida, 
I need to go somewhere and I just want to enjoy filming some like really high dollar cars, man. That's what I really want to do. We're going to continue up this aisle over here. I see another Beamer sitting right over there. Looks like a little three series, small Beamer. There's a Buick. No, no, that one's smashed in the front. We'll see what else we can find out here, guys. There's bound to be some cool cars hiding out here. It's just the difference is when you go to places like California or Florida, you can find the high dollar fun cars all day long. Out here, you don't really get those and you really have to fight. It takes hours of wandering around through the yard just to find a few, you know, maybe 12. You could easily spend three, four hours trying to find 12 cars that are something even remotely interesting to film. Now I, I catch, my eye catches this little firebird up here and I'm always down to look at a firebird, but it's probably gonna be a V6. And it's been sitting for a long time and the hood's a different color and yeah, typical. It's probably been sitting under a tree. Oh, well, I was right. <laughs> Take a look. Tree branches. Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, been <laughs> literally just rolled up on this car. And I called it before I got to it. It's covered in bird crap, tree branches, lots of bird crap. There's just bird poo everywhere. Sad, man. Oh, but hey, comes with a, uh, a black fender off of a 99 Firebird. Huh, it's got a nice little head unit in it though. Very interesting. Does it have a broken fender? I don't even see a broken fender. This is the driver's side. Yeah, driver's side fender, it's all scuffed up. It's pretty tore up. It doesn't smell bad on the interior though. Interior is really not too bad on this. Why does it have a driver's side fender? Is it, this isn't broken. Oh. Yeah, it is right there. It's cracked and I mean, this car has got bigger issues than that. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, wow. and look at the gap. Good God, I can fit my whole hand. Yeah, she, she's been wrecked, guys. She's been wrecked. Somebody was trying to put her back together, I guess. Um, why, I don't know. Let's see if we can find the, uh, the hood release. There we go. Oh yeah, she was wrecked real good. Oh wow, wow, look at that. Guys, I could fit my fingers through here. It's split in half. Somebody cut that? I guess they cut it, look at this. Look at this. Oh my, wow. And a V6 too. And look at the wiring. Man, somebody got in here and spliced all kinds of wires. Look down here, look at all this wiring. You got neon green wires. I mean, someone's just come in here and had themselves a time. The core support is smashed. I mean, wow. You got more, uh, more aftermarket wiring. Boy, somebody, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I don't, but you know what? Hey, that's all right because it's got brand new hood struts on both sides. So, uh, uh oh, yeah, hood doesn't want to close. Boy, this is a <laughs> what a disaster. Okay, well, I mean, I, I I was interested in it when I saw it from a distance, and I was back here. I was like, hey, that ain't too bad. But I want you to take a look at this. Take a look at this. Look at the overlap here. The fender literally overlapping the door up top and down low, you got a gap you could fit your whole finger in. That tells me this whole front end is like this. It's just, nah, somebody, I think somebody jumped it is what happened. Now, I see a really nice little Range Rover over here that I can't help but take a peek at. I'm sure because I'm looking at it, the whole driver's side is gonna be smashed. So why don't we just get that out of the way? No, really? Okay. So this came from dealer auto auction. I can tell, well, I could tell without this sticker. I could tell because of the dollar sign that they wrote on it. Uh, and then of course it does have the DAA sticker. Sale date, February 1st, 
2024. This is a 16 Range Rover. Let's take a look at the back and see what it says. Supercharged? No. Sport HSE TD6. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but does TD mean that this is a diesel? Turbo diesel? If it is, I might be interested in it. But my question is, how did it go from the dealer auction to Copart? Generally speaking, that's not a good sign. Uh, it's usually a bad sign when something goes from the dealer auction and then it gets thrown here at Copart. You know what else is a bad sign? It looks like somebody stole the key. <laughs> Come on, man. Really? Yeah, I guarantee you, no key. Uh, smart key not recognized. Reposition, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no keys. You don't say. Did somebody hide it up there? No. I mean, if it was in here, the car would start, right? It would. The car should start if the key's in here. And I don't see... I don't see a key anywhere. The glove box is electronic. You probably gotta have the key on you to start it. We'll check, though. Maybe they hid it in here. Orange juice bottle. No, it ain't in there. Up here. Nope, it ain't up there. It never fails, man. Can we can we at least unlock the doors? No? No, it don't do it it does not do anything. Nothing. Maybe the keys hiding down here. What is this? I don't know what that is. No, I don't think the key's hiding down here either. Nope. There's a golf tee, though. Hey, anybody need one of these? <sighs> that sucks. Truly. I'm sure it came from the auction with a key. And I'm sure it got here with a key, but there's somebody out there, man. Uh, somebody's coming out here and just jacking keys. And, and, I mean, you can see, here's another thing. You can clearly see this is open. Why would that be open? Because somebody tried to jumpstart it. Well, why would they try to jumpstart it if there was no key? You see what I'm saying? This had a key. Now it doesn't. Going to ruin it for everybody. I'm telling you. You got a, you got a few bad apples out there that are uh, kind of wreaking havoc. No key. No key. No, nah, there's no key in this. Yeah. Okay. We're wasting time. Someone jacked it. And I, I'm telling you, there. I know I've said it a hundred times, and uh, whoever the thieves are, apparently don't care. But one day, one day, these auctions are not going to let anybody come in anymore. You're going to find out these auctions are online only, as is. Oh wow, that semi truck just crashed. A semi truck towing a semi truck, and he just crashed it. Wow. And now they're running. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't good. I'm trying to hear what they're saying. <laughs> that wasn't good. That wasn't, that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh man, a little six series. I like these. Uh, that one's a little, uh, little too smashed for me. What is this? Is this one of those little Mercedes GTs? Is that what they call these? I can't remember. It could just be like a little, a little C class, like a C300 or C250 or 280. It's a C250. La Fer. La Ferrari is probably what that said. Uh, I'm sorry, but this is definitely not. I mean, red's a good color, but this is not a La Ferrari. Let's take a quick peek. Oh, uh oh. What is that? Part of the engine. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Well, that's always fun. I mean, I. I'm gonna just have to pop the hood because now I'm curious. When you see part of the engine in the passenger seat, <laughs> you just you just kind of want to pop the hood to see what's going on under there, you know? Oh, we'll find out real quick and then we'll move on. This is a pedal car, so basically uh, this was sold as, you know, most likely scrap. Oh, snap. Wow. <laughs> hey, Monkey Wrench Mike, I got one for you. I dare you to get this one running. Are you kidding me? Wow. I mean, that thing made itself a nice, happy home 
right on top of the open engine. Good Lord. Timing chain doesn't exist. It ain't there. Don't know where it is, but the timing chain is gone. What a, what a shame. <laughs> that's not, that's not something you see every day. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll move on from that one. I think that's a project that's uh, a little more involved than I want to uh, become with that vehicle. Uh, I don't even know where that timing chain went, but it is absolutely missing. That's what I'm, I'm guessing happened. The timing chain must have snapped, fell into the bottom, probably into the pan. The owner took off the valve cover, quickly realized there was no timing chain, and said, I'm done. <laughs> probably the right move. Look, here's another one. Another little C-Class. Oh, wow. She took, a, she took a pretty bad hit to the back. Folded that thing up like an accordion. C300. If you can't tell, I just, I love Mercedes, man. I really do. And I've honestly had pretty good luck with most of them. There's only one or two that turned out to be, you know, a little more of a PITA than I wanted to mess with. But for the most part, uh, I've had pretty decent luck with Mercedes. And now that I see JR with his, I kind of want one. So we're on the prowl. We'll see if we can find any. There's an E-Class over there. It's wrecked pretty good. I can see that. I'm also looking for Cadillacs. I got a, I got a itch that I just can't scratch. Like this one right here. I mean, this one's not, this wouldn't be one that I would want, but it's this style. You know, I have the ELR and I haven't driven it in, God, actually I need to drive it. Uh, the ELR has been parked. I totally forgot about it. I parked it down at Byers, and I just haven't been getting anything done down there lately. So I ought to go pick that car up and drive it a little bit before I sell it. Yeah, I'm going to be selling the ELR before too long, guys. Uh, sooner rather than later. There's like... I'm going to make probably eight to $10,000 on that car. I can't, just, I can't just turn my head on that, man. That's something that I gotta I gotta do don't really want to but kind of got to look at this Saturn it's another one you just don't see cars like this anymore it'd be nice if this was a red line you know let's take a look it's an 07 Saturn ion so it's not going to be a red line it should say red line on it yeah just a just a regular Saturn ion I love these cars too and here's why all right, so it took a hit in the back, right? Oh no, you gotta replace the whole quarter panel. No, no you don't. I mean, unless there's some serious structural damage in here, and it doesn't look like there is. This is, listen guys, do you see that little scratch? It's, it's, it's got a dent here and a scratch. Do you really think that that's going to affect the structural integrity of the car? I, I don't think so. So here's what you do. You buy a tail light, you buy a bumper, all right, you could probably pop this out and make this work, but really buy a, just buy the bumper. Buy a red bumper. This quarter panel bolts on. All right, it's so cool. It bolts under the trunk. This comes off, it bolts over here. If you, oh well, the door handle's missing. If you were to open this door, you would see that it just bolts on. The whole quarter panel just bolts onto the car. Super easy to replace. And if it's a manual transmission, this car is a whole lot more fun. So let's take a peek. It's not. It's an automatic. I should be able to show you the bolts over here, though, when you open this door. See? Take a look. Bolt. Bolt. And look, they even made holes for the hinges so you don't have to remove the door. You know what I mean? you got to take a few pieces off, some trim and stuff, take this, and you just unbolt the daggum quarter panel from the car. That's all there is to it. This? You want to talk about an easy fix? This is stupid easy to fix, guys. It's probably got some miles on it. Ugh. Well, it's not as comfortable as I remember. It's got two key fobs. Those are aftermarket, like Vipers. Let's take a look at the instrument cluster, which, you know, kind of kind of different in the center and angled like that towards the driver. It did it, something, you know. Not everybody likes it. I mean, it seems to steer all right. I'm not here looking for a Saturn Ion either, but... You know, what are you going to do? You take what you can get, just kick on the air conditioning. We'll see if it works. And I'd love to clear the change oil thing. See how many miles. 139,517 miles on the odometer. And a check engine light. But it also comes with a full tank of gas. These cars get phenomenal fuel economy too. 
So they have different levels. They have a level one, level two, and level three Saturn Ion. I'm guessing this is a level two because it has power windows. That's right, you could get these with manual windows, manual locks, all right? Power windows, power locks, power mirrors, but it's missing leather interior. So this is this is gonna be a level two. Level one comes with nothing. It's, it's so basic. Um, level two, you get some power options, and level three, you pretty much get everything. And a lot of the times, the level threes will have a sunroof too. Sounds good. Little 2.2 liter Ecotec under the hood. Goes forward, brakes feel good, backwards, yep. And yes, the air conditioning works. We can shut that off. Not a bad little car. Uh, I don't know what this is. Off, on, maybe some aftermarket lights or something, I don't know. We're gonna take a quick peek under, ow, it shocked me. Hey, it's got practically brand new tires on it too. I, I think it's a sharp looking car, I do. I like this car. Uh, let's see if we can take a peek at the Ecotec. Look how easy that is to work on. I mean, there's nothing to it, man. Nothing to this car at all. Check engine light is probably something stupid, simple, and cheap to fix. You want an Econo box? Here you go, man. This car is gonna go cheap. Parts are gonna be cheap to fix it, and the damn thing will probably run forever. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.